evening. God is blessing. Those online, thank you for waiting. <laughs> Those here, thank you for waiting. Uh, God is good. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, we can get started with a word of prayer. Then we'll sing some praises uh, to the Lord. And then we shall have a season of prayer and then we'll dive into it. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to be able to come before you uh, and worship. And so, Father God, as we lift up songs and praises to you, we pray that the words that come out of our mouth may be a sweet aroma into your presence. And by your grace and mercy, may the words that leave our lips match uh, the melody that sings in our heart. Um, Lord, we thank you. Use this as an opportunity to connect with us and us with you uh, and us with one another is our prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So I just opened up the hymn and it turned to uh, In the Garden. And I was like, yo, this is exactly what I need right now. This is a beautiful one. So uh, turn with me in your hymns to 487 In the Garden. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God Tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He speaks, and the sound of his voice. hush their singing and the melody that he sings to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own And the joy we share as we tarry there None other has ever known I'd stay in the garden
Amen. Uh, the next song that we're going to be singing actually is one page over. We're just going to stay in the section of, of, of hymns. It's good. Uh, one page over, it's I Must Tell Jesus, 485. 485, I Must Tell Jesus. song, especially uh, line three where it says, oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, my, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus and he will help me over the world, the victory to win. Uh, I don't know what, what is uh, luring your heart <laughs> this evening, but I just want to encourage you uh, to tell Jesus and not just to tell Jesus, but to recognize our need for him. Um, which leads us into the next hymn over. <laughs> We're just staying in this whole section. Uh, 483, I need thee every hour. I need thee.
time uh, I encourage us to get a partner or pray by ourselves for those watching online I encourage you to connect with somebody during this time uh, either in the room or you can take time by yourself and pray and then I will come and bring it in before we go into the word
Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for this time and opportunity that we have to be able to dive into your word. And my prayer is, as we open it, that you may also open our hearts. Uh, And as you open our hearts, Father God, may you speak into our hearts life. Um, We've been surrounded by so much this week. Stresses that seem to hang on to us and not let go. But Father God, as we walk into your presence... My prayer for all of us here is that, our, that the stresses that surround us, the problems that surround us by your grace and mercy may fall off um, in your presence, acknowledging you as king and ruler over everything. So Father God, you have our permission to speak to our hearts. You have our permission to step on our toes and you have our permission, Father God, to work the transformation that will bring healing to us and to those around us, it's our prayer and our plea, Lord, we thank you. And we pray this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Wednesday. Uh, all those in the room here today um, and those who are watching online. Uh, it's, it's great to be in the house of the Lord. It's great to be in this place specifically. Uh, it's good to be home. I feel like I've been gone for so long. Uh, camp meeting was was a long, 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 long week, but uh, but it was a blessing nonetheless. So uh, being able to be blessed out there and come home and to be blessed here as well is is it's, it's amazing. And so uh, for those that don't know, because it's been a minute <laughs> since we jumped in it, uh, we are going through a series of declutter. And uh, not only have we been working through the series, but we also have been doing some decluttering in the church and uh, still got a little bit more to go. But by God's grace, it's going to be on us. His grace and mercy going to be on us and we're going to pursue forward with caution. Uh, but I like a lot of the rooms that have been uh, getting kind of transformed and uh, I know that God is working. He's doing something. And so going along with the series, uh, the sermon series, Decluttered. Uh, we, our prayer meeting has been uh, focused on the sorting Savior. Uh, Jesus comes into our hearts and into our lives, and he begins a sorting process. And so uh, for uh, the message for today, it's going to be removing the lies. Um, probably a lot comes to our mind when we think of that, removing the lies. What does that mean? Uh, if you're a liar in the room here today, um, we're not going to spot you out. <laughs> if you're online, we're not going to spot you out. That's not what we're doing here today. Uh, we'll save that for another sermon. I'm joking. <laughs> no. Um, when it comes to life in general, uh, in a very general sense, uh, what is something in our lives that causes us the most problems? Or where does most of our problems stem from? Like a majority of our problems. If we were to say all of our problems, where do they, where do they stem from? From selfishness, misunderstanding, I don't know if I heard something in the back, pride, right? A lot of our situations just stem from pride. Uh, You know, I was chewing on this for a little bit, like, where does the majority of our stuff kind of stem from? Like, where does it, like, originate? And and I I agree, there's pride in there. Um, There's selfishness in there. There's all these probably, the, you know, the deadly sins that we think of. But I, I, I kind of I went back, and somebody taught me this. I don't remember who it was. I think it was a preacher that was preaching one time. He says, if you go back to Genesis, the first three chapters, you'll find almost everything you need to know. Like, if you search hard enough, any questions that you have, you'll find a majority of it in Genesis, like, chapter 1, 2, and 3. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a promise. I was like, that's three chapters, and we got 66 books. I don't know. Anyways, but I like the thought. It, gives, it makes you think, right? So I went back to Genesis, uh, and I kind of went to the, like, the origin when problems started kind of arising, right? Because, well, there was a problem in the garden before chapter 3, but God solved that one, man alone. That's different story, but uh, turn with me in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 3, uh, and we're going to kind of see the uh, originating of, of the problems or the issues that we've come now to face in our life. Uh, and it says here, uh, and, the, and the woman said to the serpent, well, 
maybe we can start at verse one. I don't, I don't know if I, I, if I gave you verse two, my bad. But let's start at verse one, just so we get the full context. Genesis, reading in chapter three. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? It says, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the, tr of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Right off the bat, did, did Eve understand what God was asking of her? She understood perfectly. He was like, no, we can't eat it because, hey, if we eat it, we're going to die. She understood. It made sense to her. And now the serpent comes in, and the serpent says, then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. So he begins to present something a little bit different. And so he continues on by saying, For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So as soon as the serpent comes and brings this, this thought into, into, into Eve's mind, this, this idea into her mind, all of a sudden, things begin to shift and change. What she once stated to be knowing as true, no longer did she invest in that. But it says, so the woman, when she saw that the tree was good for food, all of a sudden she believed something different than she believed before, that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. So from reading this passage, right, if we, were to go, if we were to go back to Genesis and we were going back to the origin where this all began and we were looking, we're just, all we had was Genesis 3 verses 1 through 6 to understand where a majority of our problems stem from, where would you say it stemmed from? Huh? <laughs> he said, oops. <laughs> Believing what? Believing the devil. I like that. So a lot of our problems stem from believing the devil. Anybody else want to? Not believing God. Okay, so a lot, of, a lot of the problems that we have in our lives stem from not believing God, from believing the devil. But I guess I'm just, I'm just fishing for something a little bit more deeper. I mean, it's deep, don't get me wrong, that's, that's, as, that's as real as it gets, but because at the end of the day, some people, they don't, they don't know about God, they don't know about the devil, but it doesn't mean they believe in something and not believe in something else. You get where I'm going with this? Believing what? Believing lies and not believing the truth. So, so if, you, if you really stem a lot of the problems that we have in, in our lives, it stems from not believing the truth. It stems from believing the lies. And so, and so check this out. This is what's really cool. This is what's really cool. And this is what, like, this is when gears started clicking for me and started moving for me. If you have lies stored up in your heart that you've believed the only way to get rid of it is by allowing truth to come in because you can't believe a lie and the truth at the same time or in other words the truth and the lie cannot coexist in our hearts it can't it's either we're going to believe one or believe the other it's either we're going to follow after the lie that's in our hearts or we're going to follow after the truth that's in our hearts. So this is why it's beautiful, because if we, if we can start to focus our attention and direct our sight to the truth, 
the word tells us, right, that the truth is going to set us free, right? Free from the problems that we got going on in our lives. So the question comes, where we get the truth from? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and man, I like, I like what you did. It was clean. That's clean. He says, I am the truth. I like that. Where do we get the truth from? From Jesus? The word, right? We get the truth from the word. John chapter 17, verse 17 tells us, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And so... As long as we as long as we walk around with this thing in our back pocket, we should be straight, right? <laughs> like, like we'll be good, right? Lies come our way, we like, hey, get out of here, I got the truth, right? <laughs> Are you shaking your head, brother? What's wrong? No, okay, so 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 if I memorize <laughs> No, I like I like where this is going. So so if I take time to, to memorize scripture and hide it in my heart, then I'm good. No, no, I like that. I like that. No, it's good. It's good. It's written, right? That word have I hid in my heart that I mean I sin against thee. And so, and so what, happen, what happens a lot is this, right? Truth, we find it in the word of God. Truth, you're looking for it, you're going to find it in this book. You're going to find wisdom in this book. You're going to find guidance in this book. How to live your lives. How to treat one another. You're going to find a lot of that stuff in this book. But one thing that Jesus tells us is he's saying, look, you, you search in the scriptures because you think in this you got life. <laughs> right? Like we think like, 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 all the, like, like, oh man, you know, got life. But like, like no, it's, this is what testifies of me. And so this is what happens with a, lot of, with a lot of Christians, right? What happens with a lot of Christians, and as Adventists, I feel like, you know, as an Adventist pastor, I'll speak from myself, right, we fall into this category of we fall in love with truth, lowercase t, and, and, and totally forget about truth, capital T, right? And so that's how, that's how we get people who... They got this book, right? <laughs> they got this book and they ready <laughs> to, to pierce the heart of men, right? Like, like, like the word tells us that God's the one in the business of piercing the hearts. But, but, but they don't know that, like, look, I got this truth in my back pocket and I got it, you know, in my heart. And I got the truth. I got the truth. I got the truth. And they don't recognize, or I should say, you know, I don't recognize, we don't recognize that there's still a lot of lies that we hold on to. Like, I might have this in my head. I might have this in my back pocket. I might be able to quote this thing better than anyone else, you know, around me. But the question isn't, what do you know? The question isn't, it's, it's like, yo, what do you believe? What is, you, what is your confidence in? Because you can have this and still believe lies. And that's how we have a lot of Christians who walk around and they're bitter I should say Samson, right? Pastor Samson, that's why Pastor Samson walks around, he's bitter, right? That's why he gets mad sometimes. That's why he gets, you know, that's why, that's why at times uh, we deal with all these other problems that arise in situations, right? These, these controversies we have with one another as brothers, right? Like, we have that because we believe lies. Those problems then stem because, oh, the world's evil and that person needs to give their heart to the Lord, right? Like, like, a lot of the problems that arise from us, they arise because we believe lies. I believe a lie that causes me to, to, to react a certain way or to behave a certain way. I believe a lie. And until I get the truth and believe it, I, 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 won't, I, won't, I won't be able to get rid of the lie. The lie will remain in my heart. <laughs> That's what happened to Eve, right? She, she believed the lie. And she clinged on to it. She's like, yo, I like this lie better than I like the truth. <laughs> like this truth, like, the, like this lie sounds so much sweeter to me, right? And, and she believed it. And so really the question that I want us to be asking ourselves is what lies are stored up in our heart? What lies do we believe that are stored up in our heart? 
I'm not talking about fundamental beliefs, <laughs> you know, like we all, we all gone through the 28 fund. We know, we know, but I'm talking about what other lies do we have in our lives that are just stored up in our hearts because we need truth in order to remove them. So how are we going to get the truth? We need the truth. God help us. Jesus help us. Uh, John chapter 16 verses 12 kind of helps us with this. Uh, I'm not going to say kind of. It really helps us with this. It's not, it's not, it's not kind of. Uh, I love this verse that Jesus says. <laughs> because this, this verse, this is, this is how we need to act as Christians. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going to go on a, on a little rant about this verse. This is my verse right here. Jesus still, right here says, I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them right now. Like, like, like if we could just go back to that verse real quick. If we could just focus in on this reality, sometimes we dump too much on people. I'm telling you right now, if Jesus showed me all the things that were wrong with me, day one of this walk, I probably, I would have been out. I would have been like, there's no way. I can't do that. But the beautiful thing about our Savior is he takes us literally step by step. He's like, look, look, I know the mountain's all the way over there. Don't look at it. <laughs> Don't look at the mountain. Just look right in front of you. And I'd be worrying about the mountain. What, what about all these mountains and terrains that we're going to go through? Jesus is like, look, <laughs> you, you can't even see them. Why are you reacting, right? Jesus takes a step by step. He says, look, just look right in front of you. Don't worry about that. Just look right in front of you. And imagine if every Christian, if every Seventh-day Adventist was to move like that with new believers. Where he's like, man, I know it seems like intense down the road. Don't worry about that. Like, I still got, I still got many things to share with you, but I ain't even going to share them right now. But let's just focus on where you're at right now here. And let's see if you can just take a couple steps forward. And if we walk like that, and that's how Jesus walks with us. And so he has many things to tell us, but we can't bear them now. But notice what he says as he continues uh, this verse. He says, however, when he... The spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. How much truth? All truth. When the spirit comes, the spirit is going to guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. So, so if we're looking for it, right, <laughs> if we're looking, if we're looking, if we're looking for, okay, how, how do I, you know, how do I remove these lies in my heart? How do these lies get out? It's the word. I ain't here to tell you nothing different. Like, it's the word. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to steer us away from the word at all whatsoever. But if we're not coming to the word with an open heart, ready to receive his spirit to tell us things going on in our heart, then we ain't, we're not going to be ready. <laughs> we're not going to be ready for these lies to be removed. You know, sometimes what happens is we come to the word of God and we come to the word of God holding on super tight to our lies. <laughs> like we're, we're holding on to them. Holding on to them so hard that when the spirit tries to come and tell us something, when we're reading the scriptures, we're ready to use what we just read on someone else but we're not ready to use it on ourselves. We're not, ready for, we're not ready for the word to pierce our hearts, but we're ready to take the word and pierce someone else's. And that's why, that's why one thing that I always, I always got to check myself, when I'm about to go talk to a brother or a sister that I feel like wronged me or that I feel like did me dirty or feel like, man, I want to take the word and like tell them a verse, I have to stop and ask myself the question, okay, what responsibility... <laughs> do I have in my own life? Am I following what, you know, what I'm about to say? Or am I just trying to throw, like, like, Holy Spirit, I need you to talk to me right now, right? Like, like, that's the way we have to move. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to check, like, what lies am I holding on to that I don't want to let go of? That you want to come into my heart and, and, and remove. And it's hard sometimes, right? Because it's different than what we believed, <laughs> Nobody wants to stand up and just say, hey, I'm wrong, with a smile on our face, right? Everything I've been doing up until this point, I'm wrong. Go back and tell the people I'm sorry. Who, who's, who's excited about that? No one's excited about that. It's not a glorious feeling, right? It, it's tough. It's hard. So it's easier sometimes to just hold on to the lies. 
And so when we do walk with the Spirit, right, because that's what uh, Romans 8 tells us, right? There's no more condemnation in those who walk, not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who walk with the Spirit, who live with the Spirit, what do their lives look like? Does it look like someone who knows every single verse in the Bible? Got it memorized down pat? Like, oh, that brother walking with the Spirit because he knows every Bible verse. How do you do that, right? I've been memorizing since I was three. Like, you know, people be coming out the woodworks, right? Like, how do you know someone's life? Like, yo, they walk with the Spirit. Well, for those that, for those that are curious, it's in Galatians chapter 5. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5. In Galatians chapter 5, we see the fruits of the Spirit, right? And when you look at the fruits of the Spirit, what I began to realize, and, and this is something that just kind of hit me a little bit today, I was reading the fruits of the Spirit, and I was just kind of like pondering on them. And I came to realize that all of those fruits are accessible to us. Every single one of them. Every last fruit is accessible to me. Not one of them is, 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 is far from me that I can't reach it. If I think it's far away from me, it's because I've believed a lie. Every single one. It's because I believed a lie. Like, 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 like look at this, right? So you have the fruits of the Spirit. And so, and so Paul, Paul's hitting us with the fruits of the Spirit, right? He's like, look, these are the fruits. This is how you know somebody walks with the Spirit. It's not about how much they know. It's not about how they can exegete, exegete like a passage of the Bible. It's not about how much brains they have or how articulate they are. It's not about uh, 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 the service that they do. Because sometimes you look, oh, man, that person, he'd be doing all that service. It's not about that. The thing that it's about is about love. Like, do they love? And when you think about the lies that you can believe that prevent you from, from loving, like, we believe some lies. Like, we believe the lie, right? And I'm just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just talking here, right? Like, we just believe the lie that I love if somebody's loving me good. Like, if somebody loves me good, then I love. <laughs> it says love. It wasn't no extra stuff on there. Paul didn't put no extra stuff on there. He's like, no, no, I love is somebody loving me. Or for some of us, like, I'll show somebody love if they look like they're coming into the church. You know, if we guided them along the process of the church. And then once they in, they don't need that much love. <laughs> like, they good. They in the, they in the building. God got them, right? And so our love, like, like, there's all these things that we believe that we may not straight up say out loud, but our actions speak for us. And there's these lies that we hold on to. Why do, I need to. why do I need to show love to that person? Someone else already is. Sister so-and-so, you know, and brother so-and-so will be showing love to them. They're good. And it's like, no. Like, what lies are we believing that prevents us from loving? Or from joy? Some people genuinely believe you're not allowed to laugh, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, hey, bro, brother, you laughing too hard. You must be talking wicked stuff. Like, wait, what? <laughs> Like, no, you don't, you don't even got to laugh at what, like, like, genuinely, like, like, people sometimes believe, like, the Christian walk is, is one of, whoa, is me, it's the Job walk, right, it's like, calamities everywhere, right, no, what lies are we believing that doesn't allow us to experience joy, that Christians can't laugh, that people can't be joyous, that people can't have a good time, oh, man, if I'm Christian, I'm have to, I can't have a good time anymore, what, <laughs> Right? These lies that we hold on to are peace. Trusting that God has everything under control. Or do you feel like that you need to have every control? Or I need to have everything under control? If things aren't going the way that I perceive it to go, then, then it must be all this chaos and everything's going to fall into calamity. And so these lies, we like literally, as you go along each and every single one of them, uh, uh, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. If you want to go to the next verse, I think it's 
gentleness, self-control, against such there's no law. Like this, this right here, there's nothing against this. This is the spirit. This is fruits. This is how you know somebody walks with, with the spirit, walks with God. It's not about how much they know. You ask the question, do they love? Joy, peace, right? Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, right? Self-control, all these things. We ask ourselves, do we possess those? And if we don't, we can ask ourselves, what lie have I been holding on to that's preventing me from following through on this? And once we ask ourselves that question, then it's all about like, yo, Holy Spirit, guide me to the truth. Guide me to the truth that I need to believe and trust in so that I can, so I can let go of this lie. The only way that lies get removed from our hearts, the only way, is through the Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to come and remove that, those lies with truth. The Holy Spirit has to walk into our hearts, literally into the room, bust down the door, look lie in the face and say, you're out because I'm bringing truth in, and lies leaving. He ain't sticking around. And that's how it is for our lives. And so, so when we look at the fruits of the Spirit, these are symbols, or this is, this is the fruits of a person who walks with the Lord. They have those fruits. And so, you know, I have to ask myself the question, why don't I have peace? Like, what's preventing me from, have, from attaining that peace? Why don't I have joy? What lie am I holding on to that's preventing me from that? Say, Holy Spirit, I need you to lead me. And this is a promise, and I, and I love this promise here that, that, that God gives to us in, in regards to the Spirit. Just in case for some of us, we might be thinking to myself, like, yo, like, I like, like, when I look at those fruits of the Spirit, I shiver because I don't have those. Um, I get nervous because people call me mean, and I, I don't know what to do. Like, if, if you're nervous and this is you, you're afraid, I'll let you know we're in the same boat. I feel you sometimes. So uh, in Luke chapter 11, verses 13, uh, there's a promise that's given to us. It says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. How much more? I mean, God, God is in the business of giving the Spirit. He wants people to walk in the Spirit because there's no condemnation for those who walk uh, according, not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There's, there's no condemnation in that. When we're filled with love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control when we walk with all of that we chilling that is the christian walk that that is the removal of the lies gives us that and so if we're hanging on to lies god is saying look look just ask for the holy spirit i got you just ask me for the holy spirit i will fill your heart with the holy spirit and the holy spirit will vaporize any lies that you have in your heart and replace the truth in there and the truth will set us free. And what's beautiful is the Holy Spirit sets us free, or the truth sets us free, free to, free to love. We don't have to be held captive by lies anymore. We'll be free to love. We'll be free to, 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 to experience joy. Joy in the midst of our family, joy in the midst of our friends, joy in the midst of even our enemies. Free to have peace. And I know, I know in, in, in the seasons that we be experiencing sometimes, peace seems so far from us. But there's lies that we're holding on to that's keeping us from that. So God says, I'll give you the Holy Spirit so that you can experience peace. So that you can experience patience. So that you can experience kindness so that you can experience goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is the promises that God give us. And so when we go back to the Garden of Eden and we look at the whole scene that's before Adam and Eve, it's the same scene that's before us all. Really. <laughs> I mean, like on a, <laughs> literally it feels like on a daily basis, right? We have a promise that God has given us. The surety of his word the truth and then the enemy 
comes in to whisper something different into our ears. To rob us of that. It could be our past that sneaks up into, into our heads and whispers stuff to us, right? Um, it could be family, friends that whisper stuff to us. Lies for us to chew on. It could be the world. TV, right? We'd be watching stuff all the time. Movies, the stuff, music we listen to. Just spouting out these lies to us. These lies, these lies for us to just, to just take. And, and if we're not careful... We're going to be like Eve. We're going to find ourselves running after that lie and holding on to it. Only to realize <laughs> that it was a lie. <laughs> and the joy she once experienced, the love she once experienced, the peace that she once experienced was gone <laughs> in a moment. So my, my, my encouragement for, for us is to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts to remove those lies. It's not comfortable at all. <laughs> I could I could testify it's not comfortable at all. But if we're willing to allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts to remove those lies and to replace it with the truth, I can promise that we will be set free. I can promise that. So if that's your prayer this evening, for us to be able to, 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 to allow the Holy Spirit to remove those, those lies in our hearts, then I want to invite you to, to, to pray with me uh, that God can help us, <laughs> that God can give us more of his spirit so that those lies made by his grace and mercy be removed. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, um, what a blessing it is to know that you give us your spirit um, Dear Heavenly Father, and when you give us your spirit uh, you give us your spirit so that your spirit can point out all the lies that we have been holding on to uh, and by your grace and mercy replace it uh, with truth and so right now as we're gathered here in this room as those who gathered online uh, they're praying right now that you may fill us more and more with your spirit so that by your grace and mercy every lie that is in our hearts may be uh, extinguished and your truth may remain and that we may hold on to it and that we may by your grace and mercy be truly set free Lord God be with us today uh, lead us and guide us and strengthen us um, is our prayer and our plea Lord and we pray this in Jesus precious and holy name Amen Men. I encourage you, uh, those watching online, those here present, to come uh, out this Sabbath. Uh, there's going to be some baptisms taking place, and um, we would love to uh, celebrate with our church family. And any visitors that want to tune in online or come here in person, feel free to join us. Um, God is good. Happy Wednesday. Great with our church family. And any visitors that want to tune in online or come here in person, feel free.